Okay, so we're going to be starting the second video on how to find the area bounded between um, a certain amount of curves, in this case two. Alright, so let's start. So remember the first step is that we have to draw out our Cartesian plane and sketch out these curves to see exactly what area we're looking for. So let's do that. So, here's my Cartesian plane. Remember, it doesn't have to be pretty or anything. This is y-axis, x-axis. Alright, so we have x equals y times y minus 2. So we can develop that a bit and we get y squared minus 2y is equal to x. And we know that y squared is a parabola. So it's going to look like a parabola, but we're not sure where the points are. So what we can do is we can do a chart, quick chart, of x and y values and we just plug in for y. So when y is 0, and we write down 0, we know that x is going to be 0 because 0 to the square root is 0 and minus 2 times 0 is 0. So they're both 0. And then let's try 1. When y is 1, we get 1 squared, which is 1, minus 2 times 1, which is 2, so we get minus 1. And then let's try 2. So when we plug in 2, we get what? 2 to the square, 2 squared is 4, minus 2 times 2 is 4, so 4 minus 4 is 0. So we actually get the same value of x again, and because of that, we can trace out these points, so we have 0, 0 right here, we have minus 1x and y equals 1, and we have 0 again for x, which is here, and y equals 2, which is up here. And because it's a parabola going this way, because y squared is positive, we know that our parabola is going to look something like this. So it shouldn't be so pointy at the end, but whatever. So this is our parabola. And now we have to sketch out this curve. So I like to put it in terms of x usually, or y. Well, y equals, that's how I like it. So we're going to have 2, and then we just carry the x on the other side. Okay, because x is to the power of 1, we know this is a line. And when y equals x, usually it goes right through the center like this, right, at a diagonal. Well, when it's minus x, it goes just this way instead. But because there's 2, we're going to raise it up by 2. And we know this point is y equals 2, so we know it's actually going to come and, um, sorry, this is sketchy, intercept like this. And now we have a bounded area all through in here, right? So now what we want to do is we want to draw our imaginary rectangle. Actually, we'll draw out, we'll write out our formula for the uh, area. So we have the integral from a to b. And we have f of x, which is our upper bound, minus g of x, our lower bound, times dx, right? Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to find out what is our upper function and what is our lower function. Well, to do that, we want to draw out our imaginary rectangle, right? Well, this problem is different from the other, and that's why I posted it. You can't actually put a vertical rectangle like that, because if you look, what function is touching the upper uh, upper part of this rectangle. Well, as you can see, it's the parabola. So that would mean that's our upper function. But as, if you also look at the bottom of the rectangle, it's also the parabola that's touching this rectangle. So if you were to put that on the graph that the same function is the upper and lower function, then you would have uh, the parabola minus the parabola, which would just give you zero. So you're not actually calculating any area. So what do we do in these cases? we can actually flip the rectangle so that it's horizontal like this and that's exactly what we want and now if you look if we consider this the upper part of the rectangle we see that this line is the function touching the upper part and the lower part touching the rectangle is actually the parabola and you could draw any number of rectangles that you want and you'll see it's always the same and that's what you're looking for you always want it to be touching two different functions at the same time, and in this case it is. But if you're doing vertical, well, it would be touching the same function at some points, and then over here it would ha be touching different functions. 
I know it got kind of messy there, but I hope that makes sense. All we're doing is we're flipping the rectangle so it's horizontal so that it is touching two different functions. If it's touching the same function, you can't do that. You have to flip the rectangle the other way. All right. So knowing that we're using a rectangle that's that's horizontal like this, now we're going to compute our bounds. And because we flipped the rectangle, everything's going to be in terms of y now instead of x, like our last example. So our bounds a and b are not going to be values of x anymore. They're actually going to be values of y, where these intercept. So this will be our a here, and right here where it intercepts is our b. So to compute that, we actually have to find the intersection points. We know this one, we know B is 2 already because we calculated that. But to find A, we actually have to combine the two um, functions and we'll be able to find the other intersection points. So let's do that. We know that X equals Y squared minus 2Y. Well, how about we replace X with the X from this and see what we get. All right, so we have x is equal to um, y squared minus 2y and then we have our other function y is equal to 2 minus x. Well if we want to replace x we have to isolate for x so if x is equal to 2 minus y. Okay so now we have this and we have this and I'm just gonna put the x value 2 minus y into here. So let's do that, and we're going to get 2 minus y is equal to y squared minus 2y. Now put everything on one side and you're going to get 0 is equal to y squared um, minus y minus 2. And you should be able to factor this, and you'll see that 0 is equal to y minus 2 and y plus 1, which means your values of y are actually y is equal to 2. That's one value, which we already found as b, right? And then our other one is going to be y is equal to minus 1, which makes sense because it's below the x-axis, so it has to be a negative. So now we have b and a. And you should already know our upper functions, but I'll just go through it quickly. So now we're using the horizontal rectangle, right? So if you look, if this is the upper part because it's more positive on the x-axis, you see that um, the line function is touching the upper part, so that's our upper function, and the parabola is touching the lower part of our rectangle, so that's our lower function. So let's write out our formula, our integral for this area. So a, remember, is our minus 1, so this is actually minus 1 here, and this is 2. So from minus 1 to 2, we have the upper function, which remembers our lines, so let's write that. Oh, another important thing, because we're using the horizontal rectangles, everything has to be in terms of y, right? So we can't use this, we want it x equals something, because we want the y value, so it's x equals 2 minus y, right? This is what we're putting in. So we have 2 minus y, minus, and put parentheses so you don't get mixed up, and then put in your other function, your lower function, y squared minus 2y, close parentheses, d, and it's not dx because it's in terms of y, it's dy. Alright, so then let's just simplify this a bit. You're going to get the integral 2 minus 1, and you're going to get minus y squared, and then minus y plus 2y is plus y plus 2 dy. And there you go, that's the formula for the area bounded by these two curves. Um, I'm not going to compute it. If you want to compute it, I did it. I calculated the answer to be 9 over 2. So if you get the same thing, then great. If not, um, I'm pretty sure I did it right, so try again. If not, you can email me if you really want. Uh, things to remember here is that you have to check what rectangle you want to use, whether it's horizontal rectangles or vertical rectangles. Okay, and the way you check that is your rectangle should always be touching two different curves. Alright, so in this case, I just want to repeat, 
if we use vertical rectangles over here, actually over here, it's touching two different functions, right? And you keep going and it works and it works and it works. But then right here, once you start doing your vertical rectangles, it's touching the same function, the same curve, the sa the, this parabola here. So that wouldn't work. So if we use horizontal rectangles, you'll see all the way from our point B to our point A, it's touching different um, two different functions, which is exactly what we want, so we use that. But when you use that, because the rectangle is intersecting the y-axis, you use values of y, okay, for your bounds, and all your variables should be y's, okay? But if you're using vertical rectangles, it's always going to be x, because it cuts the x-axis, okay? And your bounds would be in terms of x. All right, I hope that makes sense. Uh, I'll be doing different problems like this, and we'll, we'll have to decide at the beginning whether we're going to use horizontal rectangles or vertical rectangles. And once again, this is our, this is our area formula, and this is the final answer you should get if you compute it. I'm not computing it because you should know how to do integrals. That's not really the point here. It's just being able to set it up properly so that you can do it. Alright, thanks.